it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's the old rugged cross, you know, 2,000 years ago, the emblem of suffering and shame, but it is the, expl hell knows that it's the explosion of victory. He, he decimated that side, and he came to destroy that side, and of course he gives, he launches us in the midst of uh, uh, Satan's presence yes, and power, he but he gives us the armor, he gives us authority, he promises to be with us to the end of the age. I've been saved, born again, the Spirit of God inside for 40 years. He's never left me one day. And your testimony is awesome. And when we come back, folks, he's going to tell you how he got saved. Are you serious? I'll be right back. <laughs> folks, let me tell you something. I have a book I really recommend you should get. You go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I have a book entitled The Zombie Apocalypse. Now, it has to do with actual 35 actual accounts of demonic possession and manifestations that uh, is very troubling but will help you understand how demon spirits actually work in these last days. I highly recommend you get it also for your teens and college students to help explain to them the pitfalls to not fall into these uh, sorcery or witchcraft, seances, Ouija boards, or some video games that could alter the mind and the soul of your child. Again, this book, it's only at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There you'll find it on the products page. It'll be a blessing to you, insightful, and you'll bless the ministry. Are you serious? Are you serious? Well, I tell you what, Russ Dizdar, Pastor Russ Dizdar, Canton, Ohio, what a broadcast this is today. And as he's been sharing with us some of these unbelievable things that's rarely spoke about, really, in the body of Christ, yep. it's time to bring it forward, all right? But you weren't always this powerful man of God, all right? So tell us how you found Christ and, and what was going on. Sure, back in the, I was not raised in church whatsoever, so I didn't okay. know anything. Right. No Bible, no prayer, no not, you know, nothing. Just a little Yugoslavian hunky kid um, fighting on the streets, you know, in, in Akron, Ohio. Well, growing up, you know, coming into the late 60s, early 70s, the drug culture, the rock and roll stuff. So it was like all of that, just drugs, rock and roll, you know, all partying, fighting in, in bars, whatever. But then I was curious, and, the, you know, some of the albums and rock groups had Satan stuff. And so I looked into Satanism, looked into, you know, dark stuff, demons, all that. Um, and and, and I, don't, I can't say I really got into it heavy, but, we, you know, skimming. But um, trying to, you know, I guess find something, I became a, a Buddhist. Okay. I went to a temple and learned Golden Buddha, how to leave the body, how to talk to ascended masters. Uh, during that time, we begin to hear about people using LSD to go out of their body to engage. And you hear of ayahuasca now and people doing it to engage spirits. So we had a lot of that activity in 1974 up into 1975, all kinds of weird experiences. So in 1975, 19-year-old kid, I'm doing all this stuff, and my friend and I that were doing it together, we felt that some kind of th voices were telling us, just take your lives. Take your life. Just, just put a knife in, and, and, and we stood in a, in a kitchen okay. where we made a countdown. We were going to do this. Because how, we, how many of you were going to do this? Two of us. Two of us. It was a pact, and it was like we felt because all of this experience and out of the body and we could feel these energies around us we thought that um you know we were going to we were going to do this and we were counting down from uh, 10 all we got down to two i looked at my friend and all of a sudden i saw some kind of presence come out of his face demonic yeah. very demonic i didn't again me i didn't i didn't know what that was i mean we believed that I, you know, i'm a kid and we're into the stuff i had no i had no protection no spiritual protection so I dropped my knife and ran and I hid. Uh, the next morning we both woke up later on, talked about it. We thought it was really weird. So the very next week we're going to try it again. But we, we invited 40 people over. Big party at the apartment, loud music, people doing acid, you know, drugs, smoking up, drinking. After the party, we were going to try to practice this in a collective way to see what this was all, what it was. Right, right. Um, but the door opened up. I'm okay. in my apartment, and I look, and the door opens up, okay. and we heard about this guy named Steve that listened to an old dead preacher's sermon on the radio, Oliver B. Green. Dead, wait a minute, wait a minute. He, he heard a dead preacher preach. I mean, the guy's dead. It's his old sermon. It's an old sermon on the gospel. Okay. 
And this guy gets, and we didn't know it. He got, we just thought, heard, oh, he became a G, crazy with Jesus or something. Um, he got radically saved. <laughs> I love this guy already. <laughs> and he shows up at this apartment by himself. And the bottom line story, he cleared the apartment. He walked in, the first person, you need Jesus, he starts preaching. Oh, yeah. Next yeah. person, next person, everybody's running. I try to hide from him. <laughs> Others hide. I go out, I go out to the back porch, and I'm, I'm back there hiding, and I'm like, I'm spiritual, what's wrong with me? Why am I hiding from, from him? From this guy. Because whatever, whatever power he had was clean and right. 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 And, uh, and I looked like a faded spiritual imp. You know, yeah. in comparison, I'm thinking I'm so, but he, all of a sudden the door opens up. Now, again, I wasn't raised in church, so I don't know, I know nothing except for the movie, The Ten Commandments, you know, with Charleston Hess. I know that. Oh, you know, okay. So it's time for the waters to part well, for you. So, so the door <laughs> swings open, he steps out into my mind and I go, this is like Moses, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's all I know as a kid. And he, all of a sudden he looks at me and he just unleashed the God. He told me how much Jesus loved me. He'd wow. come to my life. He'd changed my life, how much I needed him. I was so undone, I said, I got to get out of here. Jumped it's off. your apartment. This is my apartment. I left it unlocked, all those parties. I left, got into a $35 Impala, started it with two wires, oh my. drove home to my mom and dad's house, got into that basement where we did parties too and stuff, and uh, tried to go to bed for, and for like, the, all of a sudden it started. I just, I didn't know what it was. It was just, I knew my life was so undone and, 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 and empty. See, I believe God was out there. I didn't know how to get there. Right. And sh sure enough, dead booty didn't take me there. No, And no. no new age and all that. And <laughs> so I'm laying there. Finally, I pound myself, actually Punch hit myself in the head. That's what's and wrong. And I said, God, leave, yeah, <laughs> leave me alone. Okay. And um, for another hour, this conviction, your life's this way. Jesus is Savior. He's, and I just had this constant contrast how great Jesus is and where you are, Russ. Wow. And, and I finally just, after like two and a half, three hours of this, I rolled out of my bed in 75, 1975, September, and I just said, Jesus, I don't know everything about you, but they said you would come into my life, you would save me, you'd give me your power, you'd forgive me, uh, that you are God. I ask you to come in my life. I ask you to give me your power. I, I don't want none of this other stuff any longer. It's all a lie. I accept you. I, I come into, and it's like, I mean, I was just flooded with, with Jesus and the power of God coming in my life. I mean, the next three hours was just thinking, I'm going to, I was thinking how I'm going to tell everybody in the world how to get saved, how you get to know Jesus. I'm, in, I'm, I'm only saved three hours. <laughs> and I, I'm like, so I didn't know where to even go. To, I didn't know what to do about a, a Bible. So right. I go to Kmart and buy a Bible. I met up with my friends the next day and I wanted to tell them. They looked really weirded out at me and they, they wanted to tell me something. They got saved. Oh, praise God. Then another and another and another and another. And then this whole group of people got saved all over the place. And it was just like unbelievable. But uh, I mean, I was just, I think, I think, and, and what we found out was I, I go to a church finally. Somebody takes me to a church. A girl comes up and goes, what are you doing here? I said, I'm saved. I'm coming to church now. She goes, you're not saved. She says, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. And she starts crying. I said, I said, what's wrong? She says, three weeks ago, the preacher at this church used to pray for you guys by name. I opened up the yearbook, put my hand on your picture. Three weeks ago, I began to pray for you. Wow. And now you're, you're standing in my church saved. Wow. It was unbelievable. That's what the, that's what the power of prayer can do. That's what I'm talking about. I, I, and I really, I look back at it, I think, I'm thinking, praise God, I didn't have any chance, you know? No. I mean, there's this girl praying, this preacher, you know, and, and, and just, but I was inundated. There was so, so much of a vast difference. Yeah. Now, 40 years later, you know, obviously winning, just all I care about is getting people saved, my dad, my mom, bro, you know, um, and uh, anybody, anywhere. That's right. why we went to Germany. That's why we went all these places. Wherever we go, it's about salvation. But again, the unprecedented level of demonic presence, attack, Christians having warfare issues, we have to have just everybody strengthened, build up, really equipped, and the body of Christ will become this incredible, uh, incredible, uh, massive uh, spiritual army from God if we really do. If we look at Acts chapter eight, or if we we look at what Philip was, right? Everyone else, right. we can become that. We can, you know, he goes to Samaria, preaches, the whole city gets saved, yeah. and uh, tremendous revival. They yep. send in others to lay hands on them. Yep. He gets sent to the desert. Just a one guy. So in other words, yeah. sometimes you may go into a, a location. Mm -hmm. You may have to 
help set a, a town free, a, a mm -hmm. city free, or sure. you might just have to set one person free. That's right. Because that one may then turn around and set a town free, sure. a city free. Absolutely. So we, we get them one. So Absolutely. folks, uh, his book, The Black Awakening, uh, Rise of the Satanic Super Soldiers, uh, The Coming of Chaos. Oh, yes, this is a powerful book. I guarantee it will change your life. You go to his website, get it now. Don't even, don't even, don't ask. Don't, can't collect 200 and pass or go. You got to go get it. All right. The reason is, Russ knows that we got to get people born again, and then equipped to battle the uh, the forces of darkness. Right. And if they'll come to Christ, Jesus will set you free. I mean, uh, some of you are watching right now, Russ. We have, as you know, uh, we have an online show, airs every day called The Coming Apocalypse. We have live chat rooms where you can go there. And right now, as you're watching this, there's people in our chat room right now, 24-7. Go there, enter into it, type your name and say, look, I'm here. I'm watching Russ Dizdar on television. Man, he's talking my language. I've been where he's been. And I want to get saved today. If you'll type that, there are folks right now, Russ will help right. lead them to Jesus. Amen. It, it'll change their lives. Most important well. thing, most important thing. God loves us so much, wants us saved. Nobody desires us more than God does. Right. And nobody can save us but God alone. You know, uh, we, we had dinner last night with your, you and your wife. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a w lovely wife, and mm -hmm. she's just a wonderful, sweet person. Uh, how does she put up with you? I mean, I mean, I mean <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, it's been 30, 38 years married, and, and uh, we're, we're, she's my ally, she's a great prayer warrior, and, and she goes and, and, and does ministry and helps save babies at Akron Pregnancy Service for years and years, and, and uh, she's, always, she's been on the field of ministry for all these years, too. You've been strong in the pro-life movement. Yeah. I know you are, uh, and you've just continued to stand against all yeah. forces of darkness. Sure. And uh, we really appreciate the fact that you're doing that. We need more uh, men and women of God that will stand up and, and, and never look back, never turn back. We're in the final days, sure. folks. It truly is a coming apocalypse. It is the coming of Jesus Christ, the revelation, the revealing. And I think there was ever a time that we need to get things, our hearts right with God and get washed in the blood and get filled with the joy would you right. say it's joy next 30 seconds how much joy is there well you know there's no different no question about it you on the other side of the fence you were trying with drug you know the day that i got saved i've never been drug drunk again i've never been high again and it's not only because you don't not supposed to right i have never had a desire no. the spirit of god the presence of jesus is beyond any other experience that i've been through and and as i said before in 40 years of being a believer this savior has never left me he, amen. he is faithful explicitly amen and uh and he alone i mean there's he alone gives the life the source the joy and uh, this is god folks we'll see you next week right here on the coming apocalypse <laughs>